In this video, we're going to talk about a case that's pretty straightforward on its surface, and that's the extraction of four fully erupted bicuspid teeth in a 13-year-old young man. Now, I say it's straightforward on the surface because these are erupted teeth in a 13-year-old adolescent boy, and so if you play your cards right, these teeth will come out with not too much trouble. The difficulty with this type of case is that these teeth are being extracted for orthodontic reasons, and one thing I've learned as an oral surgeon is that the one thing that orthodontists want more than anything else when they refer a patient for extraction of bicuspids is that you get the teeth out completely atraumatically with absolutely no loss of any bone. And in addition to that, you have to be sure that you get the tooth out in its entirety without leaving any root tips behind because the orthodontist is not going to be able to close spaces if there is a retained root tip. And these teeth can have very thin roots, especially the maxillary premolars can have very thin roots, and you've got to be very careful to get these teeth out without fracturing a root tip. Let's look at a panoramic radiograph of this patient. We see that we're going to be taking out the four first premolar teeth, numbers 5, 12, 21, and 28, and we'll look at them in a little bit more detail. Tooth number 5, you can see that the root apex is almost completely formed, and uh, same thing goes for number 12. It actually looks a little bit more formed. Number 21 uh, has a pretty well-formed or almost completely formed apex, and the same goes for number 28. Still, we have to be very conscious of the um, root tips and not take for granted that the root tips are not fully developed because we may get surprised. The primary instrument I'm going to use in order to accomplish these extractions atraumatically is the apical retention forcep, which you can see in the photograph on the right. This forcep is designed and sold by Carl Schumacher Instruments, and it's designed with very slender beaks that allow it to slip subgingivally and get underneath the alveolar crest and engage the root further down on the root below the crown. This gives you much better leverage and a much better grip on the tooth in order to facilitate forcep extraction. And I'll start off by giving local anesthesia, and I use septicane 3% with 1 to 100,000 epinephrine, which I infiltrate into the vestibules around the teeth to be extracted. And I also infiltrate local onto the lingual of the mandibular teeth and onto the palatal of the maxillary teeth. And I do this so the patient doesn't have to wake up with a numb lip and numb tongue bilaterally because the procedure itself is relatively quick. So I first take my number 15 scalpel blade and I make a sulcular incision on the facial aspect and on the palatal aspect. We're starting first with uh, tooth number 12 on the upper left. Take my periosteal elevator and uh, push the uh, tissue back slightly and then I'm going to go in with my 46R elevator and just slightly luxate the tooth. Then I'm going to bring in the apical retention forcep and I'm using an upper universal apical retention forcep and I'm going to slip it as far apically down the root as I can make sure I'm subgingival and I've got the root uh, held pretty securely and I'm just going to start gently rocking back and forth to the palatal, to the buckle, to the palatal, to the buckle maybe give a little twisting motion and what I'm going to do is I'm going to slowly expand that alveolus and uh, give a little wiggle again and slowly expand that alveolus until the tooth just gently lifts out and then go back with the curette uh, and clean out any debris and any, any tissue tags that may be there. Next we're going to go down to the lower left where we do the same thing. Again make a sulcular incision with number 15 blade on the facial and on the lingual. Take the periosteal elevator and just uh, push that tissue back just very slightly. Come back now with a 46R elevator and now the mandibular roots generally are a single root as opposed to the maxillary which may have two roots and I'm going to come back again with the same upper universal apical retention forcep and I'm going to do the same uh, rocking motion to the buccal and lingual also because of a fairly conical root I can also give some rotational movement and you see that the root comes out intact again then curette out that socket and then irrigate out the socket thoroughly now I'm going to come back to the upper right tooth number 12 where I'm going to again make a sulcular incision with the number 15 blade and then use the periosteal elevator to push back the tissue. Remember that with the maxillary premolars, especially the first premolars, that you can have two rather thin roots and so you've got to elevate these teeth very gently and when you use your forcep you've got to use very controlled gentle motion so that you expand the alveolus and not break the roots. So back again with the apical retention forcep and we're going to luxate the tooth 
to the buccal and expand the bone back to the palatal back out to the buccal again give a little bit of a rotation or figure eight movement at the same time and this is going to further expand the alveolus uh, until you feel those periodontal ligament fibers just uh, give way and then the tooth will become more and more mobile and gently just uh, lift the tooth right out of the socket again we're going to look at the roots here and you see that there are indeed two very thin roots that were both intact uh, we're now going to cure out the socket uh, remove any soft tissue debris and then irrigate the site and then I come back with finger pressure which I did on all the extraction sites and compress the alveolus now finally we're down the last tooth tooth number 28 on the lower right and we're going to do the same thing again with a sulcular incision and then with the 46 R elevator on the mesial and on the distal to just get a little bit of movement of the tooth but the primary work is going to be done with our forcep. So back again with the apical retention forcep, and we're going to place it as far apically down on the tooth as we can. I'm going to luxate the tooth to the buccal and to the lingual and also give some rotational movement in order to expand the alveolus and break the PDL fibers. And uh, this again being a single rooted conical root uh, comes out quite easily. Here we see that there are actually two roots, but they're fused together. Cure it out the socket and then uh, finally irrigate the socket when you're done after you've removed all the soft tissue debris and then finally compress the socket with finger pressure and that pretty much completes the procedure finally you're going to place 4x4 four four gauze over the extraction sites on both sides and have the patient bite down with firm pressure I generally will prescribe the patient a chlorhexidine oral rinse to use twice per day for about seven days and generally a mild analgesic is all that's required usually an over-the-counter non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug works quite well but I generally since I'm in private practice will give the patient a prescription for something like Tylenol with codeine to take as a backup although most of the time they never get it filled most patients are back to their usual activity by the following morning and I generally see them back for a single follow-up approximately one week after surgery